So I wasn't going to make a video originally on this, uh, but this is turning to be such an interesting power supply debug, so maybe I'll show it. But this is the power supply from this, which is a tracking generator, a fairly rare one and a fairly good one actually. It's the one tracking generator that goes up to 20 gigahertz that works on the 8566. If you follow the channel, you've already seen me fight with the Xerox Alto switching power supply from hell. Well, this one must be its great-grandchild. It also belongs to a rare and rather expensive piece of equipment, the HP 85645A tracker, which is well worth rescuing. But as you'll see, pretty much every section of this mostly undocumented supply will fail, sometimes in spectacular fashion. In this first episode, we'll do our initial reverse engineering of the supply, find out how it works, and survey the initial damage. To be fair, this instrument was already flaky when I acquired it on the cheap, and eventually failed entirely. Ah, died. Okay, but it was a quartz at one megahertz. I saw it for a second. <laughs> yeah, came back. Ay, ay, ay. Let's see if I can get. Uh... And while I was measuring, this thing was starting and shutting down, starting and shutting down, and eventually it shut down completely. And so obviously a power supply problem and I've been fighting it ever since. The problem is that this is a piece of uh, semi-modern equipment, at least for me, it's uh, from the 1990s. So they have no documentation for it. They don't uh, share the schematics. I ask them, they say, nope, forget it. Uh, and it's a fairly complicated power supply. And first it wouldn't start. You would see it trying every two seconds. And then it's starting blowing fuses. And I say, I say, okay, that's easy. That's going to be a cap or a uh, the rectifier. Those are usually the ones that blow fuse early in, in the, the section. And sure enough, check the caps, they're all fine. And uh, check the rectifier, it's all fine. So now it's somewhere in here and it's starting to blow MOSFETs. Uh, first it blew that one, but I replaced it and blew again, and it turns out it blew these ones. So I, my suspicion is that these ones are blown and then they are blowing this one, or there's something wrong with the control circuit. So it uh, forces us to look at all the aspects of an undocumented power supply, switcher power supply. Fortunately, it's not completely undocumented. They have a service manual. You can tell it's at a transition where they still were going to write something in details about the power supply. But then some marketing guy says, nope, you're not going to get the schematics out because it's fairly details refers to components. But of course you don't have the schematics, so it's impossible to follow that at all. When you're faced with a problem like this, it's, it's something you don't have the schematics and it's something not obvious. There is not many ways to go about it, but try to reverse engineer it. So I've taken a picture of the bottom. I corrected it to be nice and square using Photoshop. Uh, enhance it so I can see the traces. Flipped it over so I can take the picture of the top, uh, make them match and hopefully understand what's on the top and what's on the bottom so I can you know, start to trace it uh, without having to constantly flip the, the circuit. And then the next thing you want to do is to equip yourself with uh, data sheets of your circuits, most of them. So if you already know where VCC is and ground is and what's an input and what's an output, you are already ahead. And off you go, you start tracing, and so I do it both on the computer and also on a uh, pencil schematic, so I can both do the wiring and also figure out what the schematics are at the same time. Here we go, it's all traced out. It actually took an, uh, no, over a day to do this, a uh, day and a half. Uh, but I have a much better understanding on how, how, how it works. And you can tell these guys, they, they weren't designing to a budget because it's more complicated than usual. And this is the you know, high level block schematics. So comes in from the mains. Then you have the rectifier block and you can see it right here. 
is this part out here and converts the incoming 120 to 300 volt DC. Then it has two switch power supplies back to back. One is a buck converter and I'll show you into more detail but that's this part here that brings the 300 volt DC down to 100 volt DC and then it's directly followed by a DC to DC converter that turns the 100 volt DC into a bunch of uh, voltages namely 5 volts 36 and plus minus 18 and you can see it here it starts right here and it's all over here and then they are still not done they have post regulators they are not switched they are linear uh, which make two variable supplies and 15 volts and minus 15 volt and they are all over here and finally you have of course the whole bunch of control circuitry and that's this portion right here and you've noticed i've put a dotted line here that's the isolation line so everything that's to the left of this line is a high voltage and connected to the mains and actually dangerous to probe and everything that's to the right is uh, low voltage and safe to probe so you can see the demarcation here it's at the dc to dc transformer so everything that's over here is high voltage everything that's over there is low voltage and then if you follow you can actually see the actual trench in the design so it goes here and then there's a little gap here between the high voltage and the low voltage section so it goes out here this is the feedback chain here's the opto isolator the transition back in the other direction from uh, the, the secondary to the primary side and so the isolation trench goes over here you can see it come over here so everything that's over here to this side that's low voltage safe to probe the other side we have to use either an isolation transformer or what i'll do i'll do uh, differential probes so so far uh, i have uh, checked this section and a little bit of these two sections the rectifier i checked it first because this happened it blew the fuse so the fuse is right here right in the mains and usually when that happens it's this early section where something is bad uh, either the diodes are shorted or the capacitors are shorted somewhere so you can kind of see where they are here so the diode bridge is over here uh, i desoldered it and checked it with an ohmmeter that the four things were actually diodes uh, you can see the choke, that's all good. Uh, you can see the caps. So the, the caps, they are hard to measure in circuit. Uh, so I just desoldered them and uh, I have a good tester for caps. They all tested good. Uh, and then you see some extra components. Those are those two resistors and this circuit here is part of the kickstart circuit. But basically all the obvious stuff, it's known to be good so we move on to the next stage which is the uh, buck regulator so that's the one that converts the 300 volt dc to 100 volt dc and it's it's a relatively simple uh, thing i simplified it here but you can find all the components so it has a mosfet transistor that's this big guy right here that shoots into a combination of a diode and a coil so MOSFET, diode, diode, coil. And what this is trying to do, if you don't know how a buck converter is working, is fairly simple. Is this combination of the MOSFET and the diode is just uh, trying to imitate a switch. So basically when the MOSFET's on, the 300 volt is connected to the inductor. And what the inductor does is when it's connected to voltage it stores current so its current goes slowly up and then the MOSFET is unswitched so first the current goes through this way you 
get L to store uh, the, the, the energy in the form of current. Then you open this up and you connect it via the diode. And then the second phase, the current goes this way because this thing stores current. So then what you do is you have it restore the current that it has stored. And so at the end here, you obtain something that's over here and is going up and down and up and down as this thing gets charged by the MOSFET and gets discharged by the diode into the capacitor. So the first thing I want to check is if that MOSFET was shorted. And sure enough, it was. There it is. So here was my second uh, casualty of the, uh, this, this power supply. So I had a direct path from 300 volts to the MOSFET, which is shorted, it is died, to L to the uh, DC to DC converter. So need to find out what's happening in the DC to DC converter, which conveniently is the next schematic. So the next stage is the DC to DC converter, and that's this part over here, and it's actually equally simple. You have two MOSFETs, one here, one there, that switch the 100 volts in this transformer at 40 kilohertz, and they are switched alternately. So it's either this one is on, the current goes that way, or that one is on, and the current goes that way. So it's basically changing the, the 100 volt DC into a 100 volt AC in the transformer, and then that's a basic normal transformer, transformer, except it's smaller because it's at such high frequency which is why switcher is so great. But I also took the uh, MOSFET out and checked them and it didn't check good. So here they are. One of them was shorted. And my suspicion is that this is the MOSFET that went bad first uh, and it just caused the other one to uh, overheat because at one point those two MOSFETs were on at the same time and it just blew the other one. So right now, the problem we have is that the power supply is not safe to put transistors in uh, because it would probably blow them again. So we want to make sure that uh, we find what blew them, uh, be it the control circuitry or the startup circuit. The problem with switching power supply is that they, you know, they don't do anything unless something switches them. And that's this 80 kilohertz over here and this pulse modulated 80 kilohertz over here. So the circuit that does all that, it's this. That's the generation of the control. And this is the feedback loop. It's a very complicated one. And of course, unless this starts up, the power supply doesn't start up. So uh, the big problem here is that if I don't put my transistors, which are blowing right now, uh, the thing will never work because it will never start and the takeover power will never come. Uh, but if I put the transistors and they blow, I'll never know. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a catch-22. I have to figure a way to get this started. All right, I think that's already quite enough for this first episode. We'll see how to break the chicken and egg problem in the next episode when we debug the startup secretary. See you then.